Hey yo, Rookies, Andy Lippy here, back with another advanced OBS tutorial, and today I want to showcase five really simple tricks and tips inside of OBS that will hopefully make you a little bit better at using it. But before we get into it, make sure you do like the video, also subscribe, it'll mean a lot to me, I've got tons of stuff to teach. Let's get on with the show, put your rock the stone. The first one I want to talk about is OBS themes. So you can change the whole entire look of OBS. I've covered two of these in a video before. I've covered a Twitch theme and also a Streamlabs theme. You can check out one of them videos just up here or in the description below. But if you go to the OBS website, the link's in the description as well. And you can see there's a couple of different themes on here. You can even create your own as well. And then if we say select Twitchy um, to install something, you see this is my favorite theme. It looks beautiful. If we hit download, it will download a zip file. We just open that zip file, open that file inside there, choose whether we want the font with it or not. We want it with the font. Open up the font folder, just double click on that, and you'll be able to install by just pressing install. Once that's installed, hit back. Go to, tw you've got two folders now. You've got Twitchy and you've also got twitchy.qss. We're just going to copy them, go to the C drive. Go in either program files or program files 86, depends when you're, where your OBS studio folder is, it's all lowercase. Open up that, go to data, go to OBS studio, go to themes, and just paste it directly into there. I've already got mine installed so it'll say it'll want replacing. Then just head inside OBS, hit file, go to settings, and you'll see at the top here you've got language and then you've got theme. Just on the general tab and you can change it directly to Twitchy. Hit apply. Okay, all done. So the second one I want to talk to you about is changing the canvas size. So this one is one of them where I, I was getting really frustrated trying to move things around my screen. I'll show you for instance now. If we look inside OBS, I've got this image just here. And it's so large, I can't get to the edges. But if I right click just in the middle and go to preview scaling and change it to either canvas or output. So if I go to output, you'll see it's kind of made it bigger. But now if I hold down the space bar, this hand comes up. And this hand allows me to move the canvas around. So not only can I move it around and go up to these corners and resize it, I can also scroll. And scrolling will make the canvas really small so I can drag these sides in to make this smaller if I wanted to. Zoom in, I can move the canvas anywhere I want. It just means adding elements to outside the screen to animate them coming on. And also maybe you want to make something really stretched and zoomed in and then zoom it back out. You can easily change that by using that. So that again is right click, preview scaling, either canvas or output and then press space bar just in the middle. When this hand comes up, it means you're controlling the entire canvas. You can go as small as you want or zoom in as close as you want. Oh. All right, I went in too far. <laughs> Just like that. So that is one of my favorite features in there. So the third, third one that I want to talk about, I can't even count today, is using different scene transitions for different scenes. So if you're using a plugin such as Transition Override Matrix, this won't work for you. But this is so anybody can use it without having to use a plugin, pretty much. So let's take a look at OBS. I've got three scenes. I've got scene one here. Scene three, ooh, and scene two, which is a Teletubby, because that's what we all want in life. And I'm currently just cutting between them using the cut transition just here. But say I want something different to happen if I ever go to scene one. I right click scene one and go to transition override, and I can choose from these just here. So I'm gonna change it to fade. I could also change how long that fade is as well. So if I go down here, I'm gonna say, um, we'll change it to a thousand, just like that. So that's one second. Even though I'm on cut here, as when I move to scene two, it cuts. But if I go back to scene one now, it'll do a one second fade. That list that you've just seen just here, say if I want to go to scene two now and create another one, I'm gonna call use my transition, which is the Andy Lippy split. It'll fade when I go to uh, one, but if I ever go to scene two, it'll transition like that. Scene three is obviously gonna cut because that, that's just using the pre preset just there. Back to one, it'll always fade. And if you ever want to add more, because these little uh, transitions just at the bottom here is what is in this list just here, you just need to add another transition, use Luma Wipe shaders, colors, stingers, use whatever you like, but it just means anytime you go to whichever scene, it'll always use that specified 
transition. It makes it a little bit easier for, for using multiple different things because if I'm using, going to my game scene, I don't like it fading in, but if I ever change camera, I want it to fade. So the world's your oyster on that one. Enjoy. So number four, I got it right this time, is one of my favorite kind of tools. It is color coordinating your sources list. You can't use this on scenes, it's only on sources. So jumping back into OBS, you can see I've got three images just here. You can have as many different sources as you want and they don't have to be images, they can be any type of source. So from scenes to, to browser sources to audio sources. But if you right click on any of them, you'll see a little section for set color. And I can press set color, turn it into red, and then in my sources list, it'll be red. So it makes it a bit easier to organize multiple sources. So maybe your audio ones, you want to put them all as a red color, or maybe all your browser ones as a yellow color, different things like that. You can also right click, set the color, and also use a custom color. So you can use absolutely any color under the sun, just here, and it'll change to that color just there. It just makes keeping OBS nice and tidy, especially if you're like me and you like adding tons and tons of things into your streams. It just keeps it all under wraps so you can easily find different things on there. Wicked. And last but by no means least, I keep seeing people not rotating sources or making things look a little bit different. I'm not talking about 3D transform plugins or anything, but make sure you are subscribed because I'm going to go into that at a later date. But if we go into OBS just here and we right click on a source, we can press transform and you can see we can rotate 90 degrees and then we, we can rotate it back 90 degrees if we wanted to or 180 degrees and that doesn't look quite cool. But if we right click, go to transform and press edit transform, you'll be able to see all the position um, values just here and the rotation. So we can turn the rotation up bit by bit, just like that. We could turn it to anything we want, 111. So it'll be all the way over there. So as you can see, as I'm rotating this, it is rotating around this top left point. And the reason is because the positional alignment is not set to center. If I change it to center, it now, whenever I turn this, if I go now 180, you'll see that it rotates around that central point. So 50, you can not You can only go 360 to minus 360 as well, guys, just to let you know. Uh, and that's pretty much how to add set rotation to absolutely any source. So you could just kind of just spice your stream up a little bit by maybe just putting your camera a little bit offset just like that. Press done. I don't know. It, it, just do you. Whatever makes you happy. Uh, but that was five tips that I've found. I have covered these in previous videos, but I thought I'd just make a big mashup of them all together so you don't have to watch different videos on that one. I will be doing more of these as I get more quick tips coming. So make sure you are subscribed. Let's do it. Like, subscribe, you know what to do. It help with the YouTube algorithm. If you've got any questions or you've got your own little tips, let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely cover them on the channel. Also, join the Discord if you ever need any help as well. Okay, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Put your rock of the stone. Much love. Thank you.